Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Heritage Corridor Business Alliance's Power Hour. My name is Dan Molka. I'm the Executive Director of the HCBA. And here, again, actually, this is take two of the recording, uh, is Mike Shields with uh, Cultivated Advisors. Mike, thanks again for doing this twice. We had a unfortunate techie issue, which some of you that saw us on Facebook may have saw it, but we're going to try this again and uh, go from there. So uh, let me introduce Mike. Mike, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Thanks, actually- Thanks Dan, and no problem. I get to really refine and perfect my pitch. <laughs> so um, I am uh, I'm with Cultivate Advisors, and uh, we, we work with small businesses. We believe in entrepreneurship, and we help businesses grow and scale. Um, a little bit about me, uh, I am uh, I have a corporate background. I've ran a couple of businesses uh, over $20 million. Um, so I've seen all kinds of business problems and issues come and go, but I am much more entrepreneurial in nature, especially as I age. Uh, and I like working with entrepreneurs and owners to create those kind of aha moments uh, and, and things that really change people's businesses and their lives, most importantly. Yeah. And one of the great things is you, you'll never know when the next great idea comes from. But sometimes it's from this gentleman right here. So we've gone through, uh, we've actually had, this is our second Power Hour with Mike. So we are more than glad, we're ecstatic to have him back. So what we're going to do is go ahead and bring up the, the PowerPoint presentation here. So for those of us joining on the um, on YouTube, you'll be able to see the presentation as we go through it as well. So, uh, Mike, I'll have you go ahead and get cooking. Great. Great. So today we're going to talk a little bit about creating um, super fans and uh, using social media and current marketing uh, systems to to kind of drive this creation of super fans for your business. So you really, whether it's a sports team or anybody, there's there's a lot of teams and franchises out there that have these very loyal fans that, um, you know, kind of spread throughout the word, uh, the world, what, what a great team it is or what a great organization is. And, and there's a lot of people also who talk about companies and products and experiences in the same way. So we want to use those people to really extend your message out to the world. Um, one thing to do though, uh, if you could back up one slide. Uh, let's see, where's the, okay, go, go forward one more. Okay, great. Um, so one, one thing we want to do is kind of uh, a couple things is we want to demystify social media. Now, social media is becoming more and more accepted, more and more the reality of, of life and business. Um, and while it has been problematic on the social level for some people, depending on uh, who looks at it and how it impacts kids and things like that, there's one thing you can't ignore is how it's, it's been able to work for business and get businesses and small business owners the kind of exposure that they never could before. They used to have to go to traditional networking events, which some of us like and some of us don't like, um, and, or you, and, and it takes up a lot of time. But social media, you could build up these networks, you can meet people, you can tout your business and the virtues of your business and have other people also share that message and do it all online. It's kind of operating in a 24 seven environment, which is really cool. Um, You wanna grow engagement, you wanna build, uh, this is really creating these business relationships that stick for a very long time. And you wanna personalize yourself, your employees and your business and your product. You wanna make it feel uh, to that customer that they're truly buying something that they believe in. you want to build these customers that become your brand ambassadors and they're out there really talking about it. It's all about not what you think, not what you say, but what other people say about their experiences and working with your business uh, and your products. Um, and finally, you know, using them to, uh, to post the experiences that they have purchasing your product or your service um, and, and that really provides real unfiltered content versus the old days of using beautiful models and ideal situations and perfect weather and whatever else was promoted in particular uh, uh, advertisements and marketing campaigns and to, to give people the real deal, the real experience of what they're having. So we're going to focus on that a little bit. Let's slow down a little bit and identify some of the gaps because what happens is a lot of businesses um, will kind of say, 
um, yeah, let's do this and let's do that and let's spend this on social media. Uh, let's let's build this marketing thing moving forward. And they really haven't really kind of identified what is our marketing plan? What does that look like? And it doesn't have to be anything overly complex, but I think these questions um, should be able to be answered easily, quickly, and clearly. Um, are you messaging and, and your product attributes clearly defined? So what's your brand? What does it look like? What's your competitive advantage? Um, what media channels are the best for you? Where are your ideal customers aggregating? And then based on an investment, which ones give us the strongest return on that time investment and that financial investment? Is there a place or a way that you can get your story and content out into the world? That's what we want to do. Imagine in the, in the old days, you had to hit a particular magazine or a particular TV campaign or a radio campaign to try and guess where that might go. But now you could pretty easily identify where is, is our ideal market set and how we're going to reach them. Look at your competitors in the marketplace. Where are they? And do you have any super fans that you've already created that we could start using them um, as your brand ambassadors and they can start sharing their content, their experience in their networks as well. So make sure that you have clear answers to all of these, identify those gaps, and then we can move forward. And I think one question that I know I've commonly received from small business owners is, okay, there's 9,000 different social media networks out there. Where should I be? Should I be on all of them? And I, I think the question that you asked last is a great way to solve that problem. You know, do you have current super fans? Find it, if you find them, where are they? Yeah, where are they? Where are they? And also, I think it's okay to start with what you're comfortable with. If you're, if you're an Instagram person, if you're a Facebook person, if you're a Twitter person, start there and do some research and, and find out where your people are and, and, and just start and learn. Because let's face it, a lot of this stuff is, is trial and error. If it was simple, if it was easy, there'd be tons of people out there just saying, here's exactly what you do. And I'm going to charge you a piece of that thing. I'll be multimillionaires. So um, I, I think it's, it's really important to go with what you're comfortable with. And to your point, Dan, do some research, find out where these people are congregating and, and then you'll get their message, you get the message out to them. Um, super fans are created internally and externally, uh, offline and online. And just to give you a little bit of background information, I was, I was a president of a $40 million company and then an $80 million travel company. So in the travel business, um, we're very focused on both B2B and B2C customers. And with travel, it's all about service and touch points. And so one of our best ways to push our brands forward and to communicate on social media was really this retention drive where we get a customer, we keep them and we keep them because they're happy with our product. And that is the cheapest way to grow and build your business is to have a loyal base of customers. Sometimes there's kind of one and done business models out there. Um, but for the most part, I think there's people who say, hey, if you have to do this, this is where you want to go and you want that person to be part of your network, one of your super fans. So uh, it's really important because I think also having super fans doesn't just translate into more business and loyal business, but it also makes your employees very happy because it's great as an employee and as an organization to be surrounded by customers that just are so happy and they love your service and they love your business. It just makes going to work every day kind of validate this is why I'm here. And this is, this is what I believe in. And this is what I love about our business and our company. So everybody knows the super fans as these guys. And you could think of what Saturday Night Live created. Um, and, and, and the whole country instantly knew that these guys were your typical bear fans. They were crazy rabid about the bear franchise. And no one was going to tell them that any other franchise is better. Now, I'm not saying this is how far we have to go, uh, but it, it made a tremendous impact on what the word super fan means. It's, it's really someone that is absolutely loyal, um, doesn't, isn't willing to try anything else, and will talk to anybody about your product because they're that crazy about it. So, um, but I think it's a brilliant 
uh, example of what a super fan is um, without all the food and beer, of course. And for those listening on the podcast, just imagine us going back and forth going, Dicka. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, uh, and uh, the Chris Farley scenes is it just, just amazing, you know, with his, uh, uh, just hold on a minute, I got a piece of Polish sausage stuck in my heart. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just um, classic. And uh, so, you know, just a kind of a light example of what it could be, but really um, these are the, you want people like this to have that much passion and enthusiasm for your own product. Um, Super fans are never afraid to tell others about you, okay? And here is just an example. I, you know, say what you want about Google. Um, some people love it, some people don't, but let's face it, whenever you search a product, a service, a restaurant, anything, you go to Google first. Um, you go to Google for directions and you go to Google for uh, the reviews. And I, for one, you know, really, really believe in the use of a Google business page. I have a couple of customers that, we shifted them over to a Google business page. Um, they got immediate reviews and those reviews turned into business. And not only that, but your search engine optimization, your SEO, all of your other uh, uh, barometers that work that drive traffic uh, are enhanced. So really here you see that the company I work for has a lot of Google reviews and they're five stars. And then you can drill down and look at those individual reviews um, and of course, now this is the beginning of creating a super fan is someone who takes the time and is willing to communicate to the rest of the world what a great experience they had uh, in your business. And, and that's really special. And I think that's also not something that was able to happen in the past. So when I look back in social media and it could be intimidating, it could be frightening. This is what's great about it from a business standpoint um, is it's just a killer opportunity for people to really say, I, I love this business. I had a great time. I got exactly or more than what I paid for and I highly recommend it. And Google has a platform, it's called Google My Business, where it's easy to respond to these folks, kind of so you can see your stats and other things. And it's an important tool to kind of have in your back pocket to uh, make everything very simple, just so you can maximize your time by being efficient here. Right. Um, and then as you get this engagement, what is engagement? Engagement is creating a line of communication between customer and company um, and making sure that good or bad, you're letting them know that you see it, you're reading it and you appreciate it. And then you're creating this kind of community of, of people who are like-minded um, and believe in the same thing. So here you could see here someone with a suggestion. Y'all need to start Starbucks delivery service. Very fast response, same day. Funny you mentioned that. We now have delivery service in X cities. And so here's just someone who's thinking, yeah, you know what, huge company, Starbucks all over the world, they're not gonna read my stuff, wrong. They are, they're acting just like a small business. They're responding very quickly and they're responding with a very proactive response that makes people feel like they're connected and they care. They care what their customers say and do. But there's a lot to choose from, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So as we said earlier, pick, with, pick what you're comfortable with, what works for your business. Yeah, and not only are you responding to that customer, potential customer, former customer, the when you do social media engagement too, that helps the algorithm realize you're talking, you know, there's active content going on. It's going to boost your organic reach as well. So that way, you know, you're always branding to more than just the person you're talking to. Yep. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Dan, because I, I I didn't mention that in the last one is, is you mentioned organic search. And, you know, I'm one of those people that when I do search, I hardly ever gravitate towards the paid ads. I will look at the organic search results, which means it's going to take me to the most relevant specific to my search or the highest related. And this type of engagement and this type of listing is really what drives a lot of that organic response. So the more there is there, the more times that you're going to move up that ladder on the organic and get to the top there. So I, I don't usually go beyond the first page of organic search results. Um, I don't know what 
your your situation is there, Dan, but unless <laughs> it's not giving me something back that isn't specific to my needs, I generally stick on the first page and I stick with organic. Yep. And especially, you know, in the case that we're showing on screen here, you know, if you type in coffee delivery or Starbucks delivery, that's going to help get you even further up right. that chain. So there's a lot to choose from, a lot of different platforms. Um, so again, pick what you're comfortable with. And then there's a lot of review sites out there. So we'll talk a little bit about this because nowadays it's not just about what you say, but it's mostly about what other people say that really drive results and drive confidence. The most important thing I can, I can tell everybody here, take away one thing is respond quickly and communicate honestly. Don't ignore or obfuscate because those are the things that can destroy you. If someone has a complaint, deal with it. If they have a positive, thank them, but do it quickly, okay? Um, no one really, I think, is, is going to respond. If you respond to something five days later, that basically tells me no one's really looking at this and it really doesn't matter. So if you're gonna be on social media and you want that level of engagement, it has to be quick and instantaneous. Um, and it can be from everybody uh, in the company. It doesn't have to be from one specific person. It could be from pretty much anybody. Even if that person isn't empowered, at least recognize that you could say, hey, I got your comment. I'm going to look into that and we're going to have somebody get back to you tomorrow or, you know, private message me and I'll work on it. And those are the thing, the positive things that can be taken from a negative that lets people know I'm interested in what you have to say. And social media is the new customer service. I, you know, even if you're an entrepreneur, you know, people want that response right away, even if it's just a quick, hey, I, you know, admitting you're wrong. If the you know situation is that way, you know, let them know, hey, I am, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Can you shoot, yeah. you know, can you send us a private message? And in, in easy situations, like when it comes to food or things like that, right? Like, hey, I didn't get this on my order. No problem. We just credited your account with this. Come on in anytime. We'll give it to you. So I don't have to pick up the phone. I don't have to call somebody. I handled a service problem easily, efficiently, and quickly. And I, I, I saved the customer. So again, not something to be afraid of, something to embrace and something to really use for the growth of your business. Not liking me today, I tell you. <laughs> Sorry, we're currently stuck on yeah. a screen. And so did this happen on the same screen last it's time? It's telling us that if we take too long on any one slide, it's gonna penalize us, Dan. That's what it's telling us. <laughs> And we're leaving this in just because this also shows us too that we're human. And there we go. Okay, so here, um, one of the things I hear the most from um, a lot of my small business clients are, you know, they, they start a social media strategy and they want instant results and immediate transactions. I'm not saying it can't happen, uh, but I am saying that the goal here is really to pay attention to your analytics, learn from what your fans are responding to, and then act accordingly in terms of your marketing strategy. But don't expect instant results. Uh, and really, it's an opportunity to engage with your customers and build closer relationships, not necessarily to immediately drive that revenue. But that's going to come over time, but it's going to take a little bit of time. And you've got to really tweak the models. You got to find the right platform. You got to find the right messaging. You got to find the right super fans to engage with. And that just takes a little bit of time, but you're going to learn a tremendous amount about your customers, about what motivates them, about what they like and what they don't like. Um, and lastly, don't, don't be afraid to draw attention to positive reviews. You've earned it. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who are very humble and they say, oh, I don't want to pat myself on the back in front of everybody. It's like, you're not. Somebody else is. So run with it. Go with it. Um, I always say, you know, hey, don't take my word for it. Take a look at what other people are saying about us. You know, and that's, I think, one of the most important things that happens now with brands and advertising, how much it's changed and marketing and how much it's changed. It's all about what other people are saying about you and what your accolades and reviews and, and awards are. Those are the important things. And it's, you know, nowadays people know that know when they're being advertised okay. to, 
and know when they're hearing uh, authentic responses. Right. You probably have seen on social media that you know sometimes people will literally copy and paste a review into a graphic and post it on social media saying, "Hey, thanks, John Doe, for the great response. You know, great compliment. Put that in there." You know, it's usually good to ask them for permission to do that. Yeah. Just, but it's it's another tactic to. Yeah, it's almost activating a review. Yep. I don't think I've ever actually used those terms together. That's usually more for like sponsorship and marketing platforms, but you're activating somebody else's review. Yes. Uh, a lot of times I will also use um, Google links and reviews. And if I'm communicating with someone and they say, hey, do you have any references or anything? I will, I will cut a couple of those reviews and say, hey, check this out and just take the, you know, paste the links in there. Um, and that, that really helps because it just, again, it legitimizes it. If I send them a cut from a Google review and there's 300 Google reviews in there and they're all positive, it just, it just legitimizes what, what I'm doing. And it shows that, you know, I'm not, I'm not selling something that is, is, uh, fraudulent or is, is embellished somehow it's real. And the fact that you're doing that too. Your customer may do their homework, check out your full Google review, and the fact that you, you know, Mike's page has, I think it's hundred percent five star yeah. reviews. It's not like you cherry pick three reviews and the rest are zero stars or one right. star. Right. You know, right. you you have a track record, and you're just kind of drawing attention to that. There's a few four stars in there, um, and and I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about the company, of course. But really, the the important thing is that. These people, all these people have thought that that particular company or service or whatever has done such a great job, they're actually going to take the time to write about it. They're more anxious to write about it than they are to say, I, I had a mediocre experience or I had an average experience or I had, and if I had a bad experience, they're going to write about that. So it's usually one or the other. It's those polar opposites and the stuff in the middle tends to say, Eh, you know what? I got what I paid for. That's fine. You know, no big deal, but you're not going to leave a review to that effect, you know? So those positive ones really, really say a lot about a company. Oops. Ah, here we go. Um, so here's one of the review sites, Trustpilot, um, along with Yelp. There's a whole bunch of other ones, but uh, this is one of the brands that I, I really admire, which is Chewy. Here's an example of uh, someone had to put their dog down and, you know, that obviously Chewy supplied the, the food and the, everything else with that dog. But, you know, here's someone, Ramon at Chewy, person, an actual person sent some flowers and a condolence note. Uh, on the passing of a beloved pet. So I don't care how big you are. I don't care, you know, the size of your company, whether you're nationwide, your big corporation, this is some really cool engagement, really cool, really legitimate, and very well done, as far as I'm concerned. So you got a five star, you got empathy in there. And it's just an amazing thing, uh, what they did. And here's, you know, here's another uh, another one and they received the flowers in the vase. So great job kind of taking a big company and making it feel like a small company, which, which all the entrepreneurs here, um, can do in heritage corridor. You, you guys have the opportunity to really be that small company and to forge those personal relationships with your best customers. And this is beyond customer service. This is this, you know, you're creating memories here. Yeah. And although yeah. it's a bad situation, this is, this is that little bit of sunlight on that bad situation. Yeah. There's, there's no better way to do this. There really isn't. This is, this is a home run. Any way you look at it, this is, this is fantastic. You are, you are with your, your customers, good and bad. Uh, this is, this is, this is more like a marriage. You know, if you think about it that way, it really is. And as we're talking, I mean, a lot of people view business as a big, giant, faceless corporation, you know, with evil people at the top, you know, kind of counting their pennies. All of this is humanizing your brand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's putting faces and names to the actual, um, yeah. the actual face. And, you know, as 
uh, for our kind of our audio listeners, I mean, the person who wrote this review actually brought up uh, one of the employees names. And I mean, that that's just going above and beyond because how many times do you actually do that? You know, think about the last time you went to a restaurant, think about the last time you did this mm-hmm. or that, you know, when's the last time you actually went named an employee by name? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And all my little tricks are not advancing. Yeah. Do we have to, do we have to, uh, we may have to do this kind of all right you go. Way here. Do that again. Yeah. Yeah. It's been one of those techie days here at the heritage. It Corner. has been a techie day. So uh, it's advancing a slide. We are not, you know, like, <laughs> so, uh, moving along, um, you know, here is Yelp, uh, which I'm sure everybody's familiar with on the, um, on uh, when it comes to restaurants primarily, but they do a lot of other services here, but you can see there's engagement in both the positive and the negative. And here's an opportunity that I was talking about before. Um, you know, they, they were disappointed with the food and the service. Um, and here's a response very, very quickly, same day, um, uh, two days later, sorry, but close enough. Um, and she said, hey, uh, I'm going to send you a private message and I'd like to hear from you. You know, So there's already this promise of, hey, we're going to take care of this. We don't have to air it out here in public, but we're going to respond. We're going to take care of it. We care. And we know that fell short. So well done there. And you can't be afraid of the negative review either. It's a good opportunity if you, if you, the business owner, you know, and it's hard not to take everything to heart. You may want a trusted person who is going to take that phone away from you and respond in a calming manner to delay everything, maybe one day until you can reach out for them. Uh, obviously, you know, typically when you see somebody review a one star, they're probably emotional and in the moment. And obviously you don't want to be emotional and in the moment too, when you respond to them, because you're just going to create a catastrophic incident. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to, you want to kind of let cooler heads prevail. You want to have that customer service mentality of, Hey, we will get in touch to you. But at the same time, you want to kind of buy that time for everybody to calm down a bit. Yeah. Not, a, not only calming down, but also to research the problem and the source so that you can, even as you get that person on the phone or you deal with them, you're proactively ready to respond, okay? So that's another reason I really like this type of social media posting of of not just positives, but negatives, because it gives the company time to look back and research what happened so that when that person finally does get on the phone or finally, finally gets in a chat box, you could just say, hey, I'm fully out in front of this. I know what happened and here's how we're gonna handle it. And you make, make the problem go away before it even becomes a problem. But, you know, a lot of times, as, as Dan, you said, you know, those people get fired up on both the company side and on the customer side. And you get, you get defensive if you're the company and you're angry if you're the customer and you want to, you, you know, yell at somebody and you want to rip them apart. But it really makes sense to say, hey, I'm going to research this and then I'm going to come back to you because it's going to be fair. Um, and so those are th- just a fantastic way of diffusing these problems um, and also showing the rest of the world, hey, I'm not afraid of problems. We had it. Sure. It's not going to be perfect 100% of the time, but when there is an issue, we deal with it and we deal with it right. Um, so it's a great opportunity to show. Um, who gets it? You know, and here's just four of my personal favorites. And again, to Dan's point, you know, these are huge companies, right? And so just in the interest of saying, if a huge company can personalize and humanize and create super fans, so can you. And they've done this in a variety of ways with Chewy. Uh, I use that example uh, as, as pet owners, multiple pets. Um, you know, we, we just love Chewy because they know the names of all of our pets. They send us birthday cards. Um, and they make suggestions based on our buying purchases, or they have price and discount deals. They really know what pet owners think. You could tell that these are all pet owners. Every employee there loves pets. I think that's a probably a, a, a requisite of employment there is you have to have pets and understand pets. Even, you know, look at how cute this dog is. It's all about happy and feeling good. And that's, that's what people who have pets, they love their animals. Um, and so they've been able to take a very big company 
and, and, and personalize it and humanize it and make me feel special. Um, and so I think of, of all the companies that I've had relationships with, these guys do it about as good as anybody I've ever seen. Um, they really, really get it. So um, Pinterest is another one where because of one of my pets, uh, I have a border collie, a very uh, boisterous uh, activity driven dog. And I want to I want to see pictures of other border collies, but also stories and ideas of how to train them, how to keep them engaged. And so I just keep getting pins all the time and pin suggestions from them based on my behavior and, and interest in, in this. So they get it too and they understand it and they don't send me any fringe stuff. They just give me the good content that I, I like. And again, it's using probably AI uh, to do that, but it still works because they're interested in what I think. They're not trying to say, well, gee, Mike, let's send you information about German Shepherds or about Beagles. Uh, no, I want Border Collie information. I have a Border Collie, so they, they give me that relevant information. Southwest, I think many of us have had a lot of positive experiences with Southwest. They make flying fun. They always have. Um, their flight attendants typically are very hilarious during the boarding process, and they just, they just diffuse all of any situations that are unpleasant with flying, and they make it right. And then I book things, and they send me um, kind of little notes and things about how I can make my trip better, or can I upgrade my, my boarding priority, or whatever. You know, it, it just gives me a lot of options. It makes me feel like when I book Southwest, I don't have to worry about it. I know the plane's going to leave on time. Things are going to go right. Um, and, and I'm going to have a good flying experience. It's consistent and reliable. Amazon, you know, the big company everybody loves to hate, but let's face it, they know what I buy, they know what I want, and they're appreciative of, of my, my buying. I try to avoid buying from Amazon, and I buy local merchants wherever possible. Um, but when I can't, or it requires a long drive or a trip somewhere, then I use them on a convenience factor, but they've got it down from that perspective. And Dan, maybe you have uh, a couple other companies that might work for you or uh, that make sense. And some of the ones that I've seen, uh, I'm going to kind of pull out some local examples. We have a gentleman by the name of, was it, we'll say Matt's Barbecue in Lamont. Yeah. is going to be opening. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Uh, three, was it Three Stories, Mabel's Market, That Girl and Co.? The social media presence almost feels like you're actually talking directly to that person. And it, you know, it's, we talk about humanizing brands and things of that nature. You know, they're showing kind of their best, whether it's inspiring discussion or just making sure that people, you know, feel like they're being taken care of digitally, they're able to get that, that messaging across through social. And they're great examples. I mean, Matt's Barbecue, he started a group. And I don't know when he started because I didn't know him till probably uh, just a few months ago. And now he's getting ready to open up a barbecue place going in the place of the old vault. Uh, he's got that core group that believes in the quality product and know him now just because you, whether you chat with him in line or you're kind of going back and forth placing your online order, you know, th they've gotten that across. They've created that, hum that uh, personification um, I always confuse the names here, but you know, you're talking to people, you're not talking to a brand. And I think that's one of the biggest takeaways people can get from social media. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they, the, these, these entities have managed to humanize their delivery. So if they could do it as monster companies, they could certainly do it on a local level. Um, and then I wanted to go back. One, one thing, if we go back to the uh, Google page, um, I wanted to make sure that you really understand that these types of reviews always don't happen just organically. That whenever you have someone who's had a good experience um, and you know, you should in your emails back to them, always have a link going back to your Google page and say, hey, we live off of reviews. Can you give us, you had a great experience. Can you give us a good Google review? Um, it's really important to us. And they'd be like, nine times out of 10, sure. You can even write some of the text for them. Um, some people, yeah, I'll give you a good Google review. And then they write, great. It was great. I had a great time. You know, it's like, you can even help them a little bit to make it easy. But even at the very least, um, a lot of people will just include the Google link uh, back to the website 
uh, and then, or not to the website, but to the Google business page so that they could leave a review. Whatever review platform you're using, uh, make sure you make it easy for people, but ask for those. It's, it's really important that um, they, they know that that's how your business is driven. And it is like Matt's Barbecue and a lot of other places, it's really driven on, on that kind of social media buzz and local market buzz instead of these huge businesses that you know they're just looking for raw numbers and it doesn't matter where the people come from. And you've already done the hard part. You've already asked and gotten the sale. Asking for a review takes them 30 seconds. Yep. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, you know we don't we're, we're taping this episode, but um, Dan, if you have anything to add at this point uh, in terms of what we might have missed, um, what you'd like to accentuate or add uh, to our creating super fan social media uh, platform, I, I think probably to round it up is just it's being that authentic, nice person that people want to deal with. And just making sure you don't yell at anybody online. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the 20 second uh, elevator pitch. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, you know, it gives you a great opportunity to diffuse and it gives you a great opportunity to embrace and, and hug it out for someone that's had a, a really great experience and, uh, you know, everybody can celebrate the win. So uh, don't be intimidated by it. It's, it's not something that we should be afraid of. It's a great opportunity that replaces um, the older network events of the past, which I think are still great. And pe some people are still really good at them. I'm not saying don't do them, uh, but it, it's, it's really an opportunity to find uh, highly targeted, highly motivated people uh, to, to uh, get your message out to. Um, oh, I, to yeah. I, got, I got a good, I got a good, I just thought of this and we've gone yep. through two episodes. Um, one of the things your super fans can do, and I used to uh, do the marketing over at a, uh, we'll, we'll just say a theme park here locally. Um, we, our super fans would come to our defense. And that's one great thing about having people that love you so much that they're going to kind of go to defend you. You know, every now and then you're just going to get that bad review or something of that nature. And then all of a sudden, you might see responses that say, I'm just going to use a restaurant, for example, just say we have a burger joint. Um, oh, the, you know, it's almost coming to the defense of somebody just rails you online. And next, I've never actually had a bad experience. They're usually yeah, right. Right. You, know, you might get some of that people just coming to your defense. It's, yeah. it's one of those that kind of happens organically, but it's nice to have people on your side too. And I mean, yeah. th that's one of the positives that, you know, they're always, they're always kind of, I mean, they're being truthful, you know, and they'll, you never know if they actually did have a bad experience. They may never, never have told you, but, you know, sometimes it's good just, you know, to have that, have, you know, have, have an army behind you. And it's, it's okay to have the occasional, you know, slip up because it's, it's unreasonable to think that you're going to have nothing but perfect reviews all the time. It's almost, it's almost people can sometimes even be skeptical about that. But, you know, what usually happens is I see when there's a company that has a lot of good reviews and then there's one bad one in there all the time, you'll see somebody come back and say, you know, that's, that's odd because I, I, I've been going here for years and I've never seen that. You should call them up and they're really good with customer service. And that's a frequent thing I see is, oh, I know the owner, call them and they'll help you. And, you know, most of the time it works, you know, I mean, you know what they say online, haters going to hate. There's not much you could do about it, but it's, it's definitely the super fans will definitely outweigh the naysayers. Um, their, their voice is that much louder and that much more powerful on a regular basis. And in that example too, I mean, there is no stat behind when reviews are written to know that that person that had that bad experience, you know, maybe they walked into their car and they're immediately like, I'm going to trash this place. But then the next day when they see some responses, they're like, all right, let me just call, you know, it, it is actually helping probably to diffuse the situation. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good point. Great. Um, finishing up, I think we're, we're kind of running down on time here, but um, you know, what, what makes Cultivate special and unique is that uh, we just partner with small businesses. That's it. We, we, we only work with entrepreneurs. We believe in entrepreneurship 
and we usually have a an initial call which is kind of like a speed date um and we kind of find out what what's what's up with the business what can you you know what's your what are your revenues where where's the where's where have been your pain points and all that and then we kind of move it to what's called a free advising session so think of this as as a test drive um, for a car and you get to keep it for two days instead of just driving around the block you really get to feel like can i see myself driving in this car so we really do a deep dive into the business spend a couple hours we go into the financials the marketing the sales strategies all of the other pieces of the business and then we come out of there with a roadmap um, which is which is just amazing and that's all free um, to because we have that much confidence in our ability to kind of impact your business and grow it and scale it and that's what we do um if you scroll down next slide um this is kind of the way we do it we look at the financials as the kind of heart of the engine it's the engine of the of the propel of the plane um and these other things are the propellers and if those propellers are off or misaligned it creates a very rough ride um, for the business it affects the economy of the ride which is your productivity um, it affects the comfort and the vibration on the inside of the compartment. Um, so there's a whole bunch of reasons why, you know, you might have a nice strong financial engine, but your sales are off or your marketing is off and you're not, you don't have a good marketing plan and you're not measuring the ROI on it, or you can't find good people, uh, or the people you're bringing in are not right for your company. So we help with all these things to make sure that the, the company's operating as smooth as possible and it enables it to grow um that's it though you pick a time you set up a free advising session and you get a roadmap that's it nothing nothing ventured nothing gained no loss uh no obligation there if things look good after the roadmap uh we have a conversation and you can engage with us um and we really are motivated more by our own roi on trying to get you know 3x to 5x on our roi to make sure that um, it's a no-brainer decision to move forward with us. Um, we've made the Inc. 5, we kind of practice what we preach, so we made the Inc. 5000 list the last three years in a row. Hard to do, very hard to do, because you have to have a lot of different growth metrics to get there. So we just keep growing, and I feel this is a reflection of the growing spirit of entrepreneurship in, in, uh, in America, and uh, the fact that more and more people really want to build their own businesses and control their own kind of destiny in terms of business and, and their personal fortunes. Uh, we really get a kick out of, of helping people, uh, creating those aha moments and, uh, and, and helping people improve their lives. So Dan, thank you. Yep, thank you, Mike. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna superimpose all of the contact info information. So that way, if you'd like to, uh, no more and kind of get into that first session with Mike, just kind of see kind of, you know, the speed dating for lack of a better way to say it. But, um, you know, that first call, you, you never know. Hey, Mike's local. I mean, assuming you're watching from or listening in Lamont or Homer Glenn, um, you know, he's a great guy. And it's one of those things where he has a ton of experience and there might be a way for him to help. Yep. I appreciate that. And, uh, we have lots of references to and plenty of other businesses just like yours that we've we've helped them grow considerably. Um, there's a lot of different motivations too. some, you know, we find owners that are working 60, 70 hours a week and they're like, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> you know, I need to build a structure so that I'm not doing that. Um, it could be that, hey, I'm really good at the numbers, but I don't get marketing at all. Can you help me with that or flip that? I'm great at sales and marketing, but I just don't get the financials. And so we we just we strengthen and build up those weak spots, uh, and it really makes a huge difference in the business. Uh, and we've got lots of examples. So I look forward to helping all the HCBA members in any way I can. Uh, and uh, take care, everybody. Yep, and I will we'll kind of leave on this. If you want to kind of see how good Mike and Cultivate Advisors are. Check out their Google rating. <laughs> All right. Thank we will you. see. We'll see Thanks, you guys Dan. later. Thanks, okay. Mike. And thank you again for uh, doing this twice for us. Uh, you got it. All right. We'll see you. Yep. Bye. Have a great day. And thank you again, Mike. Thanks, Bob.